Hello, my name is Miguel Martel. Today I will explain how to connect a SIP phone to a SIP server for voice over IP communication. I will be using Vertical Televantage, 8.0 SIP server, and an Astra 488 SIP phone. This is the Astra 488 SIP phone. I will connect it to the network using port number one. As you can see, it has a second port. The second port can be used to connect to a computer in areas where there's only one network connection available. It can be connected to the power locally or it can be connected using a power over Ethernet switch on the network. By default, the phone comes configured to receive an IP address from a DHCP server. In case there's no DHCP server on the network, a static IP address must be added to the phone using the phone's interface. Once this configuration has been done and there's an IP address assigned to the phone, I will continue the configuration using the web interface. This is the user configuration for the server. And this is the example user that we're going to be using today. Go to the phone configuration. This will be the phone that will be assigned for this user, for the external uh, station. I will go to the web interface for the phone that I just uh, restart. and I will continue the configuration from here. This is the MAC address that I will use on the user side. I will make the changes here. And apply. The user account is ready. Going back to the phone, using TFTP server, which in this case is the same as the SIP server, I'm going to connect the phone to the server to obtain the latest uh, firmware and any configuration files that might have been preset for this particular phone. I'm going to save the settings and restart the phone. Before I do that, I want to be able to monitor the phone when it's coming back up and confirm that it's receiving uh, all the TFTB and, uh, and check the traffic. For that, I have my TFTP server open here and I have Wireshark. I'm just going to create a filter real quick. to filter the IP address of the phone and capture traffic specific to this IP address. Now that I'm ready, I'm just going to restart the phone. I'm going to start the capture. and I'm going to open my TFTP. There we can see TFTP traffic between the, uh, the phone and the server. Once this configuration step has finished, and we can confirm that the server and the phone have finished the, the, the transfer, we go back to the phone. This phone is now configured with the latest firmware and latest release codes, latest boot version, 
for the for this platform. So now I will configure the SIP options. This is the proxy server. This is the main server for the phone to communicate for inbound and outbound calls. And it uses SIP port 5060. The registrar is part of the SIP uh, server and it's part of the, the whole process and it's also the same address. And also runs on port 5060. In case that we had a second uh, SIP server for backup, I will be able to add that information right here in case one server fail the phone will be able to reconnect itself to the second server. Double check that information and save those settings. Once again, I will reset, restart this phone for that information to apply. Before I do that, I will clear Yes. Wait a couple of seconds before I start Wireshark. And here I go again. I will see the TFTP process going on again, but I know the phone already has the latest information, so everything will be just acknowledgements. And then we will see the SIP connection between the phone and the server. And there we have it. And there we have it. The phone is configured. Here through Wireshark, we can see the request from the phone to the server, request to register, we get the answer from the server with a 200 OK and one binding. And I will show you the bindings right now. It's another request to notify from the server to the phone. This is more like an acknowledgement and it has a lot to do with the user extension once the system is up and running and the ability to the phone to identify itself within the organization. And this is the response from the phone to the server. Yeah, it, it is me. So that establishes those, uh, uh, those questions. We'll go back to the server side. Now we'll look at the registration bindings and there we have it and this completes the installation thank you very much for your time